Hey guys, welcome back to the Airsoft Tech. Today we're going to be talking about my ICS M4 split gearbox gun and the whole other upper receiver that I built to go with it. So if you guys have been a viewer of this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I'm a big fan of ICS. It has a really special place in my heart, especially the split gearbox design M4s. They're extremely easy to work on, they're a lot of fun to work on, and there's a lot of potential there. And so for the many years that I've had this ICS split gearbox M4, I've wanted to build a separate upper receiver as a DMR. And so today I've finally completed that other upper receiver. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the old uh, externals that I have here. Uh, everything, most everything here is just stock ICS. The uh, full stock is ICS. The uh, upper and lower metal receivers is ICS. The A2 style M4 grip is ICS. This is a Daniel defense rail. Obviously, it's it's not ICS. It's aftermarket. I've baked it in an oven at 450 degrees to give it this bronze look. I've also got an AFG at the end of the uh, rail and also an M4 style flash hider. GMP style ACOG here. I've got my ACOG protector because they're expensive. I don't want it to break. And a retro arms style straight trigger. And here is the new upper receiver. So the receiver wise, it's an ICS metal upper receiver for a split gearbox. It's just basically the same one as the old one, but black. Then I have this uh, big old scope on it. I do want to get a different one. This is the only one I have though. Uh, moving down, I've got an ICS key mod rail. It's the longer one. I think it's 16 inches. I could be wrong there. Uh, I've got an AFG on it as well and some key mod rails around it. Inside the uh, rail, I do have an M4 outer barrel that goes to about a little over half the length of the key mod rail. And then the other half I have here, an integrally suppressed mock suppressor on the inside of that rail. So I like the look it gives. It keeps down the overall length and still gives it that cool suppressed look. So enough talking about the externals. Let's go talk about what really matters, the internals. So I'm absolutely in love with the idea of a split gearbox design gun. There's just something special to me as a tech about being able to pop my receiver off and throw on a new one and get completely different performance FPS and range wise. Um, the lower half here, this, uh, this build, is more of a field gun. Uh, it shoots about 20 rounds a second, about 380 FPS. Really solid field gun, I like it a lot. Great range, reaches out and touches people really far. Um, the new build, on the other hand, is a DMR build. You know, you can lock this to semi-auto with my BTC Chimera FET, we can shoot exactly 500 FPS with my .20 gram BBs, and we can reach out and touch people real far away. And so I really like the idea of just being able to pull this upper receiver off, throw this one on, keep my drivetrain the same, not worry a bit about the performance down here, and get a totally different performance with the different receivers. So let's break down this gun, talk about everything I've done to it, and then we'll move on to the new build. So obviously, since I'm running two separate upper receivers with two separate uh, stress levels to them, I have to have a really robust lower receiver. So the uh, lower receiver setup that I've gone with, I decided to go with a set of Siege Tech 14 to 1 ratio gears. And the reason why I went with Siege Tech over what used to be in this gun, SHS, was because Siege Tech can handle you know, the extreme stress of a DMR build and the low stress, obviously, of a field gun. And so the Siege Tech 14 ones were great for that. Uh, of course, they're a little pricey, coming in at about $125 to $130 a set, depending on where you find them. They're not cheap, but they will last a lifetime and longer if you shim them appropriately. Moving down, I've got an ASG 28 TPA motor. This is one of their older ones, about four or five years old now. It works great. It's always worked great. The newer ones, kind of hit or miss. They burn out on low stress setups sometimes. So I tend not to use ASG motors anymore, uh, but this one is a solid one. And the 28 TPA 14 to 1 ratio gears is going to give me a really good trigger response too. Uh, next I have the MOSFET here, it's a BTC Chimera Mark II. Uh, this is the uh, non-Bluetooth version so I have to do everything by the trigger. Uh, it also is about as old as the motor, about 5 or 6 years old or so, and it's been kicking ever since. I had one hiccup with it one time but it turned out that my lower uh, gearbox shell wasn't screwed together all the way, allowing the trigger board to not really sense everything appropriately. So once I screwed everything back down and set the trigger board up right, it worked fine. Uh, obviously got the standard BTC 16 gauge wiring with the signal wire routing back everything into the uh, stock here. So trigger response wise, it's really awesome. And one of the things I really like about ICS is that I can just kind of visualize my gears. Uh, I have active motor braking on just to kind of have the gears reset appropriately 
just so I can put the receivers on. I do turn off active motor braking uh, when I actually use the gun. It builds up a little too much stress on the motor, so I'd prefer not to use it. But here it is anyway. That's an 11.1 volt LiPo. As you can see, the response time is awesome. Full auto. Safety, obviously that works. So now that we've gone over the robust lower receiver setup, let's pick one of the upper receivers and talk about it. All right, so this is the field gun setup here. Uh, the field gun doesn't need to be as strong here on the gearbox shell just because it's not operating at an extremely high stress level. So running here, I've got the standard ICS split gearbox shell. These things are fairly tough. They're really hard to break. I wouldn't push it past M140, M150, but they're still really hard to break on a, on a uh, reasonably stressful setup. Um, so here I have it radius, obviously always radius, your gearbox shell, if you can. Version 3 you don't need to, version 6 you really can't, version 7 you can't really either. Version 2 absolutely you should, so radius your version 2 gearbox shells, this one is capable of being radius. So up here I've got a uh, version 6 ball bearing spring guide. The reason only, only reason I have a version 6 as opposed to a version 2 is because I the day I was building this gun, I didn't have a version 2 ball bearing spring guide laying around, so I just grabbed a version 6, and it works great. Um, I got an M110 spring. I don't run an M120 in this spring just because M110 got me slightly below 400 FPS, and that's exactly where I wanted to be. So uh, this is an irregular pitch spring. It's a good spring. It's held up for a long time, a couple years now, and I like it a lot. I believe it's a Garter, which would make it about an SP100. Uh, moving moving further down I've got a Crytac piston here I've been running this Crytac piston in here for about two or three years now it has held up awesomely correcting for angle of engagement between the piston and the piston head and on the cylinder head has allowed me to get a really good pickup tooth angle um, the teeth look really good uh, as you can tell most of the teeth on this piston are plastic and they look really good I'm just gonna run this thing until it strips so right here on my compression setup I've got uh, these ZCI red cylinders, they're neat. Uh, I like them a lot, they're just cool colored. And I can make the compression work just fine, obviously. Here I have an SHS metal cylinder head. Now, I probably should have a plastic cylinder head on this setup just to better absorb the stress and not transfer it so much to the front of the gearbox shell. But, you know, oh well, I just have it in here for now. Uh, tap of plate wise, I've got an SHS version two tap of plate. The only reason I'm not running the stock tap of plate for an ICS gun is because when I got the gun, I didn't have it. it. It didn't have the tap plate in it, so I just threw in a stock SHS one. Uh, here I have an SHS AK version 3 nozzle. The only reason I'm running this one as opposed to an M4 one is because this one is actually the appropriate length where the M4 one is slightly too long. ICS air seal nozzles are about the length of the SHS AK nozzle, so that's what I'm going with here. If I don't have to modify something, I'm not going to. So that's this setup. It gets about 380 FPS with a .20 gram BB. That's exactly where I want it, because some chronos will read a little low, a little high, and I want to be able to play with this gun whenever I want to. So barrel group-wise, I'm running a Lonex M4 hop-up chamber with a ZCI uh, 6.02 363mm barrel. Now, the reason why I'm running a Lonex hop-up chamber in here as opposed to the ICS one is the ICS hop-up chambers are actually really brittle. They break super easily, so I just got rid of it when it broke. Um, you can get ICS metal hop-up chambers, that, that is true. They're a little hard to find, so I just tend to go with Lonex hop-up chamber and modify it to fit the split gearbox design, which I have a video on that. I have a video on that topic on my channel. Um, so the reason why I went with a ZCI barrel is they're cheap and I can polish them up nicely on the inside to work fine. Um, nice barrels are nice, but it's just not something I'm going to spend a lot of money on unless I really, really want it. Um, yeah, this hop-up chamber works great. It's r hop. It's got a Lonex 70 degree hop-up bucking, and it's got my own custom nub in it. So works great. Gets me some really awesome range, and uh, I've only ever had to change the bucking out once in the four years I've had this set up here. Yeah, sounds about right. Anyway, let's move on to the other upper receiver build. Alright, so here is the DMR upper receiver broken down. So I decided to go with a Retro Arms ICS upper receiver here, or upper gearbox shell half here. And the reason I did that is because, like I said, the ICS upper, the, the standard stock ICS upper gearbox shell, really I didn't want to push it past the M140, M150 range. This is an SP140 spring. So just to play it safe, I went ahead and got dropped the money on a Retro Arms uh, upper gearbox shell for the ICS split gearbox. And 
it is really really cool I like it a lot it's kind of some parts don't fit quite right in you got to modify some things but nevertheless the uh, rigidity the durability of this is just bar none and so I wanted to go with that it's about $110 uh, I feel like it's worth it uh, you know but that's up to everybody who builds this kind of gun um, like I said this is an SP140 spring this is a garter spring uh, I like to go with garter now I typically I used to go with Prometheus and then I kind of noticed their spring quality dipping and so I went with garter and I've not had bad luck with them at all so I'm gonna keep buying garter if garter is gonna keep making good springs the spring guide here is a uh, retro arm style spring guide and it doesn't have a ball bearing end on it which kind of sucks but you know that's fine I can put some ball bearings on my piston head which is what I have done just get this thing out here there's some ball bearings in there this is an SHS 15 tooth steel rack piston the pickup tooth looks good the most the most trouble you're gonna have with an SHS piston in this kind of setup is going to be breaking the pickup tooth support here the blue plastic part behind the pickup tooth that might break if you uh, you know get a lemon or your AOE isn't perfect or SHS quality control gets you bad it happens sometimes but uh, the steel rack on this is nice, it's holding up good so far. Uh, AOE correction on the piston head, or between the piston head and the uh, piston itself. I'm running the SHS aluminum uh, piston head, works great. Uh, ZCI, uh, full cylinder again, that nice and red look. Uh, the cylinder head is a GMP cylinder head. This is, a, this is a metal one, I probably should have a plastic one in it, but I have a metal one in it for now, that's okay. Uh, retro arms gearbox shell should hold up fine and really what you want to make sure is that your retro arms uh, shell fits together nicely and doesn't uh, and, and accommodates your parts well sometimes these retro arms gearbox shells don't do that very well so if you find yourself having to squeeze and really screw down your gearbox shell to get the two halves to fit together you need to reassess fitment with everything uh, so obviously the full cylinder the metal cylinder head here by GMP and then I have running the SHS AK air nozzle for reasons explained earlier. And I have a Lonex tappet plate here. Now I've shaped down my tappet plate here. Uh, I, Lonex tappet plates are a little different from SHS tappet plates. The Lonex tappet plates can be really finicky. So I had to modify this one a lot. I had to shave the front end down a lot to get it to about a standard length. And I had to cut the fin just to get the release right for my FPS. So it's working great now. Uh, it's shooting about 450 FPS with a 0.25 which equates to about, you know, four, uh, about 500 FPS or so with 0.20, um, or a little under. So it's shooting about right, right where I want it now. And uh, yeah, this is a really nice build. It gets a pretty good trigger response. It's gonna reach out and touch people real far. And uh, yeah, that's this upper receiver build. So the uh, hop-up chamber barrel setup on this is identical to the previous one, except with a slightly longer barrel. It's got an R hot patch, Lonex 70 degree bucking. It's obviously got the Lonex M4 hop-up chamber modified to fit the split gearbox design. ZCI barrel, but out to 407 millimeters. Uh, again, really nice barrel. I polished it up real good. It's nice and straight. It'll work really well. So let's take this to the chrono and compare both of these setups. So real quick here before we start chronoing, I was putting the gun back together and I meant to talk about this part right here. Uh, so this is a shim with a screw through it that goes into the spring guide. So this retro arm style uh, gearbox shell, you need to have your spring guide secured. On standard version 2 guns, there's a screw that goes in from your buffer tube through your receiver into your gearbox shell and holds onto your spring guide and keeps it straight. This gearbox shell on, or on the ICS setups, that doesn't really happen. There's no screw that holds the uh, upper receiver uh, that holds the stock to the upper receiver to the uh, gearbox shell. And so you need to have some sort of screw here. Thankfully the ICS gun accommodates for this kind of thing. I just had a shim and a flathead screw that I popped in there to keep the uh, spring guide straight and this fits perfectly fine in the upper receiver and lower receiver combo. So as you guys can see by the chrono, the field upper receiver is shooting about 450 FPS with a .25, whereas the DMR upper receiver is shooting about 420, 430 FPS with a .28. Um, those are pretty good FPSs for what I'm looking for. Uh, that should be fairly good. Both of those are fairly good for what I want. Um, 
the upper receiver for the field gun I typically use indoor and outdoor so it really works well at both and the DMR I'm super excited to use it at the next outdoor game I go to. I'm really pleased with both these builds they did take a lot of work a lot of work for both setups I've been working on that gun back behind me for with the field upper for quite some time now just getting it perfect and it just takes a lot of fine tuning to work with ICS sometimes especially when you use a lot of aftermarket parts and then the field DMR setup has just taken a lot of work as well. That's okay though, DMRs tend to take a lot of work. But I'm really happy with the results of both of these setups. Alright guys, that's going to have to do it for this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. All of those really helps out my channel. Liking and subscribing just helps build my viewership. And commenting helps me interact with you guys as well. And also, share this video with your Airsoft friends as well. Also, when you comment, tell me what you want to see on a third upper receiver build. I'm thinking about doing a third one where I make it a really short, stubby CQB gun. So uh, tell me what you guys want to see internally and externally on that build. But again, thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video, whatever the heck I do. But until then, stay tuned, Tex.